Hi, you're joining me at the Oaks Fishery today where I'm on the fantastic Willow Lake fishing for silverfish in winter. This is the sort of fishing that I love to do as soon as we get onto this sort of time of year when there's, everything's cold, you get a few frosty mornings, roach, skimmers, perch, they are the most reliable fish to catch at this time of year. I'm gonna give you five mini edges on how you can get the edge on these sort of venues. So the first tip I want to talk to you about today is the ground bait. Now, I think when you're fishing for silverfish, there's always been this thing in the past, do I need a sort of sweet, normal type ground bait? Well, on commercials, I can tell you now, you do not. Trust me, if anything, I think that sort of ground bait is a hindrance. When you get on big natural venues, for whatever reason, they're definitely the nicest mixes. However, when I come on commercials like here at the Oaks, it gets loads of pellets all the time and roach are now tuned to that bait. That is their natural bait. So you need to look at that when you're thinking about your ground bait. So my mix I've got today is F1 Dark and a bit of Thatcher's. I really love our Super Sweet as well. These are two what I call lower fish meal type mixes. Only a little bit of Thatcher's in this today, all right? Only a tiny bit. And there's also a tiny, tiny handful of lean in this mix as well, just to give it a bit of a weight because the trouble is when you fish with like fish mealy type ground baits unless you mix them very wet they can be very light and they have a tendency they could float so just that handful of lean in the mix literally i would say not even an eighth of my mix is lean hardly any but it just gives it that weight which means the balls sink every time you can see there the mix is a nice brownie type color dark brown that little bit of thatch is bringing out the light mix nice and damp and I always mix it so I can just squeeze it and it forms a nice ball like that, look. You can see there, totally the finger shapes in the ball. If you happen to work it, it's not right. And I don't want it overly wet either. I do want something that I can do different things with. I can break it up if I need to or not. So there's a little ground bait tip for you. mini edge number two and it's all about bait now on this sort of venue when I'm fishing here like this you've got to keep your options open all right but you don't have to go with tons and tons of different baits the main bait I will always bring to any sort of fishery like this is going to be maggots I always bring at least two pints maybe two and a half three pints if I've got a few left over because I do believe that these are the best bait in winter for catching silverfish I don't know if it's that a little bit of movement that little bit of activity but when you're on venues where there's a big mixed stamp of fish in there, maggots seem to be the number one. I tend to go for reds with an odd white in there, probably be my number one bait. I've got some casters here. All right, I always bring a few casters when I'm coming uh, to these venues. I'm, I've got to be honest, I was, I was talking to somebody about this only the other day. I think casters are a nice to have. If you've got a few casters, you can use them. And there is a few venues where they can be good. My edge with casters is, they are for the edge. So I will be feeding these today right down the edges, which we'll talk about in a bit. And they will be the bait for there because I'm looking for bonus fish. Casters are a bonus fish type bait. Big perch, a bream, a big roach, something that might stray down the edges. So that's what those casters are there for. And then I would not be anywhere without pellets. I've got some fishery pellets here today. You can see I've got like a good two, two and a half pints because I might end up fishing pellets for skimmers. It doesn't always work, but I think pellets are a very cheap bait. They kind of act like a ground bait as well. So I'll always have a swim where I'll feed a few pellets. It just gives me that option because on the days when those skimmers are on the pellets, absolutely, you'll absolutely slay them. I've also, Got a lovely tip here with expanders. I'm going to show you these. So effectively, I've got some pro feed pellets in here, um, pro feed expanders, and they are six mil, four mil, and two mil, all in one tub. 
I just did a few of each. You cannot believe the difference in getting a bite on some of these baits. Sometimes a two mil expander is amazing. You can get bites all the time. You're matching the, the feed almost. You might need to up it to a four perhaps in certain situations, but a six mil is brilliant for those bigger skimmers. So it's no different to being fishing maybe a pinky, a maggot or double maggot. You don't always fish with the same bait. So you need the same of expanders. You need that little range of expanders in there. So I've got that today and a few pinkies just to finish it off. I only bring pinkies if it is hard. There's literally quarter of a pint of fluoro pinkies in there, nothing at all. I might flick a few in the ground bait. I might nick a pinky on with some bait, but I'm not gonna feed any pinkies. My main feed will be the maggots and the pellets. But that is my little bait selection when I'm coming on a commercial for silverfish. One of the things that always catches me out when I'm coming on commercial silverfish matches and I start off fishing is how light you've got to go with elastic. I can't emphasize enough how important it is, especially if you're on a very shallow lake. I won't hesitate to drop down to a single three elastic. I can land pretty much everything with that. So I really won't hesitate because I don't want the fish splashing and making a big noise in the swim. People think, oh, I'm on a commercial. I need big heavy elastics to bag. You don't take it steady nice light elastic play every fish like it's a winner and that way you keep catching that little bit more consistency it's something i learned a long time ago fishing on canals and it still applies on commercials here today it's a bit deeper i've got a five dura slip this is so light when i strike into a fish there's going to be elastic everywhere I can guide the fish around get my net and net the fish i will net any, anything that's over sort of three ounce, I'm going to net it anyway. So I don't need a big heavy elastic to swing every fish. That is a massive edge to keeping the fish coming on these venues. Right, this is a great tip, and this applies to doing your floats, okay? And it's something that's massively important. It's the use of a back shot. I cannot tell you how important it is to fish with a back shot when you're fishing with light floats like this. It just gets that little bit of line right down under the water nice and cleanly and sets your float perfectly every time. You're gonna have to dot your floats down massively when you're fishing on these sorts of venues. And what I find is if you don't, that bristle can just hold up and down sometimes depending on what sort of surface there is. You know, today there's no wind. So I'm gonna need to dot that float right down. So I've got a back shot, you can see there, right, right against the float. I don't put it miles away, literally half the bristle. It's just enough to make sure it registers on the float every time, so it is, incorporated into the shotting of the float. That's just a number 12 stop and it sits there and it just holds that line down absolutely perfectly so I can get perfect presentation every time. My final mini edge for commercial silverfish has to be about feeding. And for me, this is the biggest secret I have when I come to doing this sort of fishing. You've got to take it steady with the feed. I see way too many people plowing in too much bait. You've really got to think about it. We do it when we fish with pellets, we tap in pellets really steadily, little pots, things like that. We don't start bladdering pellets all over the place, do we, when we're fishing for F1s and carp. So why would you do it with silverfish? All right, you have to, to keep it steady. Sometimes I'll feed a line with four or five maggots at a time. There's no need to feed 20 maggots. You might think, well, the difference 20 maggots, four or five maggots really isn't a lot, but it, it really is when it comes to these sorts of fish. So you have got to be prepared to take it steady. Sometimes I might just tap in 10 or so little micro pellets just to kick off a swim. Don't think you have to plow in loads of bait. There is times when you might have to, you might be going in and it's solid and that's why I've got a couple of pints of magnets and that with me. But I would say most of the time, I'm probably only gonna feed half a pint or so of bait. I'm just gonna try and keep fish coming. It is winter after all. You're looking for regular bites, manage your bait. Just remember the fish aren't that same competitive summer mode and that is a massive edge.
If you like these little videos, check out all our content elsewhere, Instagram, Facebook, we're absolutely everywhere. But more importantly, check out the website. It's the website, it's all about the website, www.anglingedge.co.uk. On there you'll find incredible long videos with tons of detail. Honestly, Rob, we love doing them, don't we? And there's so much there for everyone. That is the place to check out all our stuff.